Now, there's a false teaching out there today that all sins equal. All sins, you know, we see it different, but in God's sight, it's all equal. You know, that would be a ridiculous, unjust God who saw all sin as equal because all sin is not equal. And the proof of that is that all throughout the Bible, God distinguishes the severity of one sin over another. You know, for example, Jesus told Pontius Pilate, he that delivered you unto me, talking about the Jews that delivered him unto Pilate, he that delivered you unto me hath the greater sin. So how can someone have a greater sin if all sins equal? Yeah, right. And then also, Jesus talked about the Pharisees and the scribes receiving a greater damnation. Yeah. Well, if all sins equal, how could you have a greater damnation? If all sins equal, then why did God in the criminal code of the Old Testament punish some things minorly and some things severely? Some things are punished with death. Some things are punished with a beating. Some things are punished with paying a fine. Okay, but... That shows right there that there's a difference in severity. And there's not a single scripture in the Bible that says all sins equal. And the reason that this is such a dangerous doctrine to say that all sins equal is because it causes people to commit bigger sins. Okay? Because they think, well, it's all equal anyway, right? So, I mean, we're all going to... And then they just say, well, we're all going to sin. We're all sinners. And so if I commit fornication, I mean, that doesn't make me any different than anybody else because, hey, we're all sinners, right? But that is a very dangerous doctrine. Think about how dangerous it is to say, well, you know, stealing a pencil and murdering someone, it's the same. I mean, you'd have to be a crazy person to believe that, but think about what that would do to people's morals. And I've, I've confronted people who were in major sin and had them say, well, we're all sinners. And it's like, well, wait a minute, though. We're not all fornicators, you know. And they'll try to, and what they'll do, they'll take certain scriptures and they'll twist the meaning. Like, for example, in James 2, verse 10, it says, Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So he's saying, either way, you're a transgressor of the law. If you commit one sin or if you commit both sins, you are still guilty of before God. And there are chapters like Romans 3 that go into the fact that there's none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But none of that is saying that all sins equal. It's just saying that we're all guilty before God. It's saying no matter how good we are, and even if we don't commit a major sin, we're still guilty and condemned to hell unless we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. That's why it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. So the point is that we're all guilty. We all need to be saved by Jesus. But that's not saying that everyone is uh, of the same guilt or that all sin is equal. See, that's a big stretch there to make that leap from the one to the other. And it's dangerous. Or they'll take, for example, Matthew chapter 5, where it says, you know, that if you look on a woman to lust after her, You've committed adultery already in your heart. What's the context of the passage? The passage is teaching people that we're all sinners. We're all guilty. He says, look, if you say to someone, thou fool, and if you're angry with your brother without a cause, he says, you're in danger of hellfire. What's he saying? The same thing Revelation 21, 8 saying when it says all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He's trying to show us that you don't have to be a murderer to go to hell. You don't have to actually go out and commit the physical act of adultery to go to hell. You could just hate your brother in your heart. You could just uh, think a lustful thought toward a woman and look upon a woman to lust after her and you're guilty. But that does not mean that looking at a woman to lust after her is just as bad as actually going and committing adultery and doing the physical act. See, the one is punished by death, even on this earth, okay? And the thing about that is that if you taught people that, here's what you'd be teaching them. Oh, they look at someone with lust, well, I might as well go through with it now. I mean, I'm already guilty of it anyway. It's nonsense. It's ridiculous. Plus, the Bible also differentiates between sins of ignorance and sins that are committed presumptuously. Sins that are just deliberately committed. Those are differentiated in Scripture. You know, David said, cleanse thou me from secret faults. 
You know, things that he didn't even know that he'd done wrong, but he also didn't want to sin presumptuously. And he said if he sinned presumptuously against the Lord, he said that would be the great transgression. That's why the men of Sodom in Genesis chapter 18 and 19, there is that story of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible says that the men of Sodom were sinners before the Lord exceedingly. See, there's sinners, and then there are sinners exceedingly. There's damnation, then there's the greater damnation. There's sin, and then there's greater sin. But today we have this doctrine of just, hey, all sin's equal. So then when you try to show them scripture that says, hey, the Bible commands us to separate from a brother who's a fornicator, they say, well, your church will just be empty then if you don't allow sinners. Look, I've heard it a million times. They say that if you were to throw out the fornicator, then your, your church is going to be empty, buddy. That's a lie because not everybody's a fornicator. And there are plenty of churchgoers who don't commit fornication. Well, if you get rid of the drunks, you have to get rid of everybody. No, wrong. Look around. You're not, this is not a room full of drunks tonight. This is not an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting that you stumbled into. This is not. Now, are there people in here? that are susceptible to those sins or maybe even guilty of those sins and haven't been found out. You know, of course, that's always possible. But, you know, we're not going to openly, knowingly have a church filled with people who call themselves a Christian and are out fornicating, getting drunk, extorting money. Look, the Bible says, no, this isn't me coming up with this tonight. Look at the Bible. It says in verse 11, but now I've written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat. He said, what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within? But them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Look, is there a person we need to get rid of? According to the Bible? Yeah. He says, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Yes, we are all sinners. And I'm going to admit right now that I am a sinner, that I am not perfect. I'm not going to get up here and say, hey, I've repented of all my sins. You know, I'm walking in sinless perfection. No, I am a human being. I sin. I do wrong things. I make mistakes. I am constantly coming short of the glory of God. I am battling just like you between the flesh and the spirit. And there are times when I'm walking in the flesh and would fulfill the lust of the flesh. But listen to me now, I'm not a fornicator. I'm not a drunk. I'm not a railer or an extortioner or an idolater or a covetous boaster. I am none of these things, okay? And if I were, then I should be thrown out. And if you are, then you should be thrown out. I mean, that's what the Bible said. So the Bible is differentiating between these major sins And just, and people say, oh, you're Catholic if you believe in, you know, big sins and little sins. You know, that's just, you, you could throw names at people, but this is what the Bible teaches. Right. Okay. Amen. And look what chapter 5, verse 1 says. Because a lot of people will say, well, how can you guarantee that you don't have such a person in your midst? Well, of course, we don't know what everybody's sins are. There could be people amongst us that are guilty of these things, and we don't even know it.